with the release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, we thought it would be a good time to go back to when Pokemon was primarily 2D, and talk about the tools and extensions that GDevelop has that could help you make a monster tamer type game of your own, with that classic top-down movement and turn-based combat. Starting with the really basic stuff, we have a top-down character sprite with four directions of animations, and we're going to give that the behavior for top-down movement, and then tweak some of the values so we get the right speed and movement. And then in the event sheet, based on which direction the character is moving in, we'll change the animation to match. And then when they're not moving, we'll pause the animation and change the frame to zero, which is standing still. And then when you start moving again, we play the animation. And then for all the objects that you want to have depth, we need to go into their anchor points and drag it down to the base of the image. So for the player, it's at their feet, and for the tree, it's at the trunk. And then we go to the event sheet and use an action to change the Z order of the tree to equal the Y position of the tree. Because your Y coordinates get lower as you go up, this will change your Z order to go behind if you go above things. And then if we do the same thing for the player, you can see that once the origin point for the player goes above the origin point for the tree, the player's image goes behind the tree. But when that point is below the tree, the image is in front. Next we'll deal with collisions. When you're working from this top-down perspective, you want the collision masks of your objects to be at the base of the image. But when it comes to games where you want the player to not be able to go through large areas, you can use an object and stretch it across the space you don't want them to go through, and then use the action Separate Two Objects to keep the player from going through it. So we can expand that idea out to a whole town. But to get the camera to follow the player, we need to install an extension. If we search for new behaviors and type in smooth, we'll find the smooth camera extension. And all we need to do with that is add it as a behavior to the player object. And now the camera will follow the player around. And the next thing to tackle is dialogue. We can create a new layer, put the text object on that layer, and then to get that classic scrolling text, we need to add the auto typing extension. And with that one, we can add it as a behavior to the text object so we get this scrolling effect when we talk to NPCs. Next though, we're going to want some buttons. If we go to the Asset Store, we can scroll down and find the Menu Button Pack, which is actually a custom object. We can click in and add one of them to the scene, and then change the animations and some of the padding, and put them in scene so we can have some ready-made buttons. And then we can use the Is Clicked condition to check if we've clicked on the button, and then change the scene to Battle. But first, we're going to want a transition, which just happens to be something that you have access to with another extension. And for this one, we want to install the Flash and Transition extension. And for this, we'll want to make a Shape Painter object and give it that behavior. Then we can drag one in scene and use this action to trigger the transition before changing the scene. And now we're in the battle. And for this, we have those custom buttons, some health bars, and two sprite objects, one being the player and one being the enemy, and they both have the health extension applied to them as a behavior. And this behavior comes with a lot of the numbers that you want from the get-go. You've got damage reduction, starting and max health, as well as dodge chance and shields. For the health bar object, we're just taking the current divided by maximum health and timesing it by 448, which is the width of the health bar. And then for the attacks, we're using these two last extensions, the Flash extension and the Shake object extension. And if we go to the event sheet, you'll see that if it's your turn and the attack button is clicked, then after some tweens, we shake the enemy and make them flash, and then apply damage using the health extension. Monster Tamer games have a lot of moving parts, but hopefully you can see that these behaviors and extensions can help do a lot of the heavy lifting for you and help you get closer to the game that you want to make. And speaking of game that you might want to make, if that game includes some random level generation, check out our next video.